Now to install the battery, take the strap that was included, feed it through the front hole, and make sure that when you do feed it through, you go over the bar so you don't actually go under the bar. And then pull it through, and then go up through the back hole. The actual plate for the battery, the screws on there were not as tight as I would like. And make sure that you are aware that the screw you will need for the battery plate is smaller than the ones that we've been using previously to help balance it. This will help prevent jostling the battery while you're actually running around with the gimbal and filming. Okay, after the battery is installed, you can then move on to installing your monitor, which is on the side opposite to the battery. After you have the uh, monitor tightened down to the bar, take the screw and the rotary looking nut for your monitor. And first, tighten the screw to the bottom of the monitor. And for this test, we are using a little cheap five inch monitor, the DC-50. And after tightening to the bottom of the monitor, you take the wing nut and feed it up into the threads and tighten the monitor to the monitor mount. While installing your monitor, you can leave the screws a little bit loose so you can get some play on the bracket, which will then allow you to move the monitor up or down if you need, if you need to. We did get a four foot long HDMI to micro HDMI cable. For using the monitor cable, we do like to use an HDMI to a micro HDMI at a right angle. And after plugging that in, you see how you have a lot of extra cable, which is where you can start using the included zip ties. Make sure you are just simply gathering the extra cable that is hanging around and give enough slack for the camera to move any direction while in the gimbal. Now after having the monitor set up and the battery installed, you can now turn on the gimbal. And there's a little red button here on the back portion here. And remember, while you are turning this on, try to keep the camera as level as possible. It will beep. Now on the right side of the controller, you do have a little joystick which is uh, used to make slight adjustments as well as change modes. If you click once, you will go into follow focus vertical, where as you move up, the camera will then move up, or as you move down, the camera will then angle down. If you double click, it will go into follow focus left and right, where if you angle the camera left or right, then the camera will follow to uh, point forward. If you click it three times, it will then go into stationary mode and keep the camera facing forward regardless of where you move. Now one thing that we did notice while balancing the gimbal and actually turning it on, this is the first time we've ever, ever had a cam gimbal where you didn't have to go through the software process. That is uh, pretty impressive. Now, as I said before, the joystick can be used to make minor adjustments, but you can also have full control of the tilt left and down or tilt right and up on the camera as you see fit. And then from there, you have it as balanced as possible. Put it in follow focus. <laughs> Oh, look at that. That is so cool.